And let's see if I'm zoomed in all the way. Not quite. I can zoom in quite nicely here. All right. Make sure it is. All right. Good afternoon. Welcome to Music Scrap. Music Scrap. This is part two for today. Lovely Thursday afternoon. Little cooler today. Not as quite as much humidity as the last few days. Um, <clears throat> my headache. The Advil has done the trick on my headache. It appears, so I'm very glad. In the first part of my video, this is part two, I prepped my covers and papers, signatures, and did all the hole punching to be ready to Coptic bind this journal. It is... Um, from a mixed media journal, um, Canadian brand. I can't even remember the brand. I should have looked it up on Amazon. Um, the paper's very nice, but the problem was it was a spiral bound journal that had very loose um, perforated pages. So the minute I started adding even acrylic paint, let alone wet media, to the page, the perforated pages started falling out. The paper started breaking apart. So I decided I was going to put the paper into a Coptic bound book, but some people wanted to see how I did it. So I thought I would stream it today. And I see, hold on, I have one here. I have one set here that does not seem to be trimmed properly. I must have missed trimming it. One moment, please. Because it, I don't, it can't. <laughs> Once I get the journal together, it'll be too hard to trim. So, and I'm not a pro like Janet with the uh, knife. So I'm using my trimmer to trim down the pages. I've got three pages in each signature. I just got a little end here that didn't trim off, so I'm just going to snip it off with my scissors. So I'm just going to, excuse me, make sure, oh, this one, something really weird happened to this one. Just a moment, I need to fix my whole punch. Somehow, on these ones, the holes did not get put. Maybe I'll leave these ones out. Just a minute. All right, these two pages seem to be really out of alignment. I have two extra pages, so I'm going to take them, fold them, and hole punch them. And replace those ones that did not get punched very well for some reason. The other ones all look good. Alright, let's try this. Let's fix my hole punches. 
put my clips on. I apologize. I thought I had this all done. But, you know, I lined up my holes to make sure they looked okay. And they didn't look okay. On this one set, they were all messed up. The holes did not punch in the valley properly. So, it'll make it... It'll mess up my journal, so. Don't want my journal all messed up. So I'm going to fix the holes. And we should be all good. It was probably Eileen's fault. Before I started recording, I also took some, um, floss, embroidery floss. I colored it with watered down green acrylic paint and waxed it. So, I just have an old big pill bottle that I keep, I have dental floss in there because sometimes I bind with dental floss, and I have a nice mattress needle, a curved mattress needle, and I told you guys I'd show you my secret for threading a needle. So, what I do is, guys, uh, know that I only have 10% vision, so even threading a large needle like this, I cannot do it this way. So, what you do, because this works even with a, a small thread needle, is you pull it back between your thumb and your index finger, okay, and you hide it. Then you take the eye of your needle and you lay it over top of where your thread is. And then I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my fingers like this and it's going to push the thread through the eye of my needle. All right, this works for me who's legally blind. So it will work for you if you have issues getting thread through a needle. Of course, I don't think it's gonna work for this one because I think this, I think I use, need to use my larger needle. Hold on. This one works for my embroidery floss, but it's not going to work for, er, for my dental floss. But it is not going to work for this. So I need to get my larger one. Okay. Where's my larger needle? There it is. All right. Try this again. Okay. Where did the end of the see? So visually impaired I can't even find the end of my thread. Here it is. Alright. So once again. I'm going to simply push. I've got it hidden and I'm going to roll my fingers so it pushes it up through. So I'm placing the eye of the needle on top there. I don't know if I can do it so that you guys can see it happening. It 
it split on me. Hold on, I've got to trim the I got to trim the end of the thread. I don't think I can do it on camera because even doing it this way, I need to get it. There we go. All right. Right through. I don't think I could do Coptic binding unless I had a curved needle, just so you know. This might be too long to use. If it is, I'll cut some off. So what you do is you line up your line up your pages and you take your top pages and you flip them over like that. And you start with your back and your bottom page set of uh, your bottom signature. Wow, you guys are talking so much. Are you guys still awake? Or have I absolutely lulled you all to sleep? So, <clears throat> you start from the inside. No. I need to put a knot in the end of my thread. Where is the end? Hello? Have I lost you guys or what? You guys are scaring me because you're not talking. Hello? I think I need to refresh my own chat. Just one moment. <clears throat> okay, I see you now. Upholstery needle, mattress needle, same thing. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Um, I didn't realize that my chat stalled. I had to refresh my chat. I couldn't even type in myself. Bye, Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer left long ago. Missed that. I wasn't ignoring you with that question, Eileen. I just didn't see it because my chat stopped. I see you now, May. I see you now. I was tying the end of my needle, but I lost you all. Okay, where'd the end go again? I was putting a knot in. I don't, I think I need to do more than one knot. I do a rolling knot. I don't know what, what kind of knot's called, but you roll the thread around your needle, cross it over, and you roll it between your thumb and your forefinger and it knots your thread. All right. Okay, so an upholstery needle used to be used to make mattresses, I guess, as well. I don't know. So, you go through your first sig your back sig the signature After doing that knot, I think this is going to be too long a piece to work with. It's probably going to drive me crazy. But anyway, I'll trim that off later when I'm done. Okay, so this is why I'm saying, hold on, I need to move just a minute. I need to move my camera here. We will know shortly if this is going to work, guys. All right. Now you guys tell me if my head's, if all you're seeing is my head, okay? Alright, so, through from the inside of your, uh, then you go around and underneath, 
All right, the back cover. Oh, hold on. I've got to see how I went through them from the inside to the outside. Well, I had to do that to line them up properly, but it makes it too hard for my needle to get in, so I have to push my paper. So I need to take these holes and I need to go through from this side. So I need to go through from this side and poke them back and flatten. Because I'm always going to be going through these from the underside. So That's what I thought it was a I thought it was a quilter's knot, Eileen. I thought that's what it was called. Mama showed me how to do it. And she did do quilting. So much easier than just like trying to tie a knot in your thread. It's like really everyone should know how to do that kind of a knot. That's how I do it for my knitting too. My yarn if I have to knot. Okay, sorry. So, <clears throat> these aren't very straight. How come they're not straight? That's really weird. Anyway, whatever. We'll see if it works. So you go through to the outside of your signature. You go around from the underside this is the hardest thing to to film it and hold it so that you guys can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing you come up through the hole of the cover let's take take care with your th thread it's waxed so it's not going to get knotted as easily as Okay, so now I'm up through there, all right, so now in order to connect these two, you not go around the, go around the, the um, loop of thread that you just made there. And this is going to knot it. It makes what's called a chain stitch. This is also called the chain binding, I've discovered. Coptic binding or the chain binding, chain stitch binding. And you pull it tight and you go back through your hole. All right, once I get my needle in, I like to, before I keep pulling that, I like to pull this and make sure it's got a nice tight knot there. This is the hardest part, is getting the covers on. Oh, sure, Jean. It's not going to knot because it's waxed. Ah, there we go. I do, Eileen. I think I have enough thread. 
takes more thread than you think, you know. I'm going to pull it farther through my needle, though, so that it doesn't. I'm going to pull it through my needle farther. Won't take as much pulling. All right, then you go up to the next hole, come out. everything in green not as much as a Z does everything mermaid or certainly not as much as Patty uses always purple and teal but I do love green I had to choose a color and this paper called to me when I was trying to decide what paper and that's how I decided on the green It won't break. I'm not that strong, Eileen. Go through the back of your cover. This might have been better if I like set up my webcam on my on a headband on my forehead or something. I know my thread is too long, but I don't want to have to join and make another knot in the middle. Oh, I don't have to. All right. Marion, hi Marion. You and Eileen have a great club. You and Eileen and I. It's always been, I can never remember, I can't remember a time that green has not been my favorite. I when I was two years old and people asked me my favorite color, it was always green. Always, always, always. So now, alright, so I've come up to the cover. So that creates this loop from where you went, okay, from the signature and down around. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to go around it and that creates a chain stitch. Okay, then you go back through. I'll tell you, this is a lot easier than for me than you when I was using the white dental floss on white paper. Yeah, that was fun to try and do, guys. Let me tell you. All right, back through. That's the trick. You do your chain stitch, and then you always go back through, all right, your hole, your signature. The same signature hole. Always go back through the same one. Alright. I didn't pull that tight enough, so I need to pull this. And this is going to be more difficult because all right, so I, di I didn't pull this tight. I noticed it when I went back through. So I had to go back and pull it here. And now I should be able to... 
darn it, I was supposed to check that before I did my chain stitch. See? Okay. I remember to do that. This is only the third, uh, one, two, three. I have to still do, I have to do Paula's book, but I didn't get her pages printed. I have to print off her pages for her watercolor journal because in exchange for the watercolor paint, she is sending me, uh, she requested that I make her a swatch book. So that is what I'm doing. So, sorry, down through the signature. All right. Through the hole. Remember, from the outside, you go through that hole. So this is one thing you have to watch for. Watch that your, your, your thread doesn't get caught around there. And you have to make sure this stays tight, which is what I didn't do last time, which made my life a little more difficult. So... Once I get this pulled through, before I pull it tight, uh oh. Sorry, I went through the loop and I shouldn't have. Give me a moment here. I need to I got it twisted. It's because I have too much thread. One moment. I'm not, yeah. I'm not making this look as easy as it is, honest, guys. This is not hard. All right. So before I pull this, I need to make sure I need to make sure this inside one is pulled tight. So I need to pull this and then pull this. Now before I do my chain stitch, I'm gonna make sure I've got that nice and snug there. Then I'm gonna go around through my loop. Can you hear that? That is not my cat, that is my neighbor's cat. She must be out and she's crying to get in. She's so loud. Oh, she's such a cute little tabby. You can do it, May. Yeah, this was white. It was just regular. Grammy, it was just regular white floss that I used watered down craft acrylic paint. I dried it and then I waxed it using some nice vanilla <laughs> wax from my Scentsy burner. So it was the only wax. I had a wax candle that I took out of its little, one of those little uh, tea lights, but it, it was too old and it was just crumbling, so. All right, so now I've got that all nice and tight. So I'm gonna go back through my hole I had two the other day. She, <laughs> my neighbor went in to answer the phone and left the cat tied out. And uh, when it lasted more than like five minutes, I went, because I wondered, like, wanted to make sure my neighbor was okay, but I could hear her talking on the phone. So I took her off the lead and let her in the house. <laughs> Mm. 
All right. Next haul. This is the hardest part. Putting those signatures in is easier than doing this part because there's this extra step because of the cover. Gosh, it got caught around a pencil in my... Oh, my fingers won't move. Uh oh, I'm poking through the page. Page. Uh, let's try this again. It's harder with this larger needle. Okay. Oh, CB must have found her envelope punch board, did she? In that very special safe spot that she put it last time she put it away? Yeah, we all have those special safe places, don't we? All right, making sure I keep this one tight while I pull this one. This is the part that I'm not as good at, is making sure my covers get nice and taut. And go around. Pull it taut. And back through the hole. You know what, Eileen, that's a good idea. It probably would. Let's clip it. Eileen said, would it be easier to clip the signature? And I bet it would be. So let's do that. Good idea, Eileen. See, I listen when you have good ideas. She says I never listen to her and that I ignore her. But I listen when she has good ideas. I need another potato chip. Okay. All right, where's my needle? <laughs> okay. Eileen, see, you've just made my life way easier. Why didn't I think of that? This is my third book and I never thought of that. Gosh darn it. Oh, one in a row. Yeah, exactly. One in a row. I feel, when I'm doing this part, I feel like I'm all thumbs. <sighs> all right. My needle pulled through there. Ah, uh. oh, the wax is on my fingers and my, it's making my too slippery. I can't even pull the needle. There we go. Gosh, darn it.
All right, so I'm going to hold that and pull this. Make sure my Yes, I'm sure you have, Eileen, made many journals. And people who are better at Coptic Stitch are probably, like, looking at the way I'm doing this, like, uh, but, you know, it's only, only my third journal, so I'm still learning as I go the easier way to do it. But let me tell you, this is much nicer than doing it with the dental floss, just so you know. I will be finding somewhere to get waxed thread. Maybe I'll look online at Walmart and see, but they don't deliver for free unless you spend over whatever, so I'll we'll have to see. I can't get it on Amazon Canada for a decent amount, for a decent price. Small enough. Monique, what what is the... Oh, I have to look at the size of this. Because one millimeter is all I can find on Amazon Canada, and that just seems to be too thick for me. Let me see how thick this is, if it says. Yeah, but you're in the U.S., Susan. You guys get a lot more than we do here in Canada. Let's see. I didn't order any because I, I thought one millimeter seemed to be this has all Japanese letter on it. Moon brand. Embroidery floss. Let's see. Made in China. 100% cotton. doesn't say how thick it is. 415 is the color number. But there's no thickness. How thick would that regular embroidery floss be? Um, Monique, you, you're in embroidery. I just, I can get one millimeter, but I think that's too thick. But maybe that's what this is. I don't know. Pliers? They're what you, that you grasp. They're a tool, a carpentry tool that you use to pull out nails or um, you can use them to turn screws or whatever. To give you a good grip on things to pull. All right, now where did I leave off? Okay, I need to make my knot. Or did I already make my knot? I already made my knot. Yes, I already made my knot. Now I have to go back through my hole. No, they're heavier duty than tweezers, but yeah, they're for, they're a carpentry tool. A carpenter or a mechanic uses them to grip things. A dentist uses a version of them to pull your teeth bay. Yeah, pull teeth. All right, and this is one thing that I found that sometimes would happen, and you may not notice it gets caught around the corner of your book. Need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Of course, now I'm going to have green thread in the middle of all of my, but since this is going to be like a 
testing kind of thing, it doesn't matter. I'll be doing separate pages. Or if it's a double spread, it won't matter. That's one bonus for using white thread in your journal. Because then you don't have... But really, this is so much easier. I don't think I'll ever use white thread in binding a book again. Journal again. If I get good at this, good enough at this, I may... And faster. <laughs> um... I may start making some of these to try and sell. But it takes so long, it's hard to, you know, but it's something good to do with extra time, right? If you're sitting watching a TV show or listening to an audiobook and you don't feel like doing something else. Except I need to find a way to to get a better grip on the needle. Yes, also for jewelry making, to hold something in place while you're, like for wire wrapping and whatever. And around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight holes. Doesn't matter if you have odd or evening in even in Coptic stitch. Doesn't matter. And there are all kinds of fancy ways to do like some people do like three holes and then three holes at the other end leaving a space in between Because I could do some with just like regular print paper. I could do some junk journals with, I mean, I've got so much scrap scrapbook paper, right? I could do some with scrapbook paper to make junk journals. No, there's no signs of fraying at all. This is much nicer than the dental floss. needle through. There we go. But yeah, I have to get started on Paula's journal.
All right. And do my chain stitch. And of course, I'm stopping and reading chat too, so that's adding time to what it actually it takes to do this. Uh oh. I'm gonna put my needle down like I did before. Oh, there it is. Got a kink. There we go. All right, back in through. Oh, it just broke. Oh, crap. It didn't show any signs that it, I didn't think it was going to break at all. Eileen, you're right. I didn't even get through the whole first row and it broke. Jeez. That sucks. All right. So I wasn't even pulling very hard at that point where it broke so what am i going to do this obviously embroidery floss is not a good idea for this because the rest of this is going to be questionable see look Look how hard, I'm pulling that as hard as I can. There's no way that should have broken. There must have been a weak spot in the thread. All right, I wonder if I can, if I can get this tied off here, I can keep going. I think there's enough here to tie it off. Oh, oh. Hold on. Well, it is inexpensive cotton floss, of course. It's cheapo stuff. Only me, I would get cheap stuff. I'll keep going. So I'm going to knot this, I hope. I may have to go back one more hole to get enough thread to knot, but we'll see. Ah, come on. Okay. Now it's unraveling. Try one more knot. Got one knot made. I'm going to put a second knot in here. All right, I'll knot it this way. All right, where is my, all right, I'm going to take the wax. I'm going to get it kind of pulled back together here because it frayed. It uh, 
unwrap un unwrapped itself. I'm just gonna put a little wax on it. And that didn't even work. Hmm. All right, I'll work on that. But is it going to be strong enough to keep going? I think so. But I don't know if I can get waxed linen thread, Eileen. That's the problem. dang it all because if I'm going to get another thread I'm going to have to um, I have yellow hemp thread in my box with my bagpipes wherever they are I'd have to wax it though. Get some good thread to finish it. Uh. All right, Monique, I didn't see your answer. Um, Monique, do you know how thick this like embroidery floss is in millimeters. Oh, well if I can't find linen if I can't find linen thread, I'm not sure I'd be able to find carpet thread. We like we have we have a fabric shop in town. A, there's actually even a quilter shop here. I wonder would a quilter shop have wax linen thread, Eileen? Yeah, probably, Eileen. That's what I thought, but oh, it was going so well. <clears throat> I'll have to take it apart and start again. I'm glad I, you know what, I'd rather it happen on the first row than get halfway through the book and have it break. <sighs> Yeah, but I have to find it. I have to find it first, Mary, and that's the thing. I you can't use just sewing thread because it's not thick enough for binding. Six strands and eight millimeters long. Yeah, okay. They have it for art quilts. Well, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call the quilt shop here in town and I'm going to see if they sell waxed linen thread. Do I have no I don't have any crochet thread, Denise. Or no, Bonnie, I mean. upholstery thread well okay yeah I'll, I'll check and see if my Walmart has wax linen thread the the craft department in my Walmart so small Eileen I doubt they're gonna have it but I will look. Um, yeah, it's sometimes money, yeah. I 
don't think I'll save this recording. Well, I guess I'll save the recording. I'll just say <laughs> continuation of to to continue later when I find some wax linen thread. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>